All right. So we are going to finish out 4.1 linear regression part four. And we're using these steps to find our problem in Desmos. So on your notes, I'm going to open my notes really quick. We are looking at this part of our notes, right? Um, when we look at this, these are some pretty large numbers, right? Um, for the years, is there another way for me to represent the years instead of using 1950, 1960, 1970? Exactly. Perfect. We can use zero as our base. So 1950 is our zero. And then from then, how many years from 1950 are? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, phones away, especially if you put your paper in the basket. Set phones away, especially if you put your papers in the basket. All right. So we're going to go to Desmos. And we're going to input our data. So you're going to press add to add a table. We're going to put in um, X1, Y1, and Y2 because we have two, two sets of data to input. So we need a Y1 and a Y2. We said we're going to let 1950, remember, we're going to let 1950 be our zero. And then from there, we're counting by 10. Did we all see that? So 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So I'm going to put in zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Okay. The next thing it asks us, how can we represent our numbers? These are pretty large in millions, right? So instead of writing out the whole 12,911,995, I'm going to write it as 12.9 million. Does that make sense? I'm going to write this as 14.8 million, 16.2 million. Do we see how we're rounding it to the nearest million? Okay. So I'm going to need y'all to tell me because I can't go back and forth. So what is our first one for New York? 12.9. Then what's next? 14. 16.2. 16.1. 18.1. 21.2. All right. So there's New York um, population in millions. I have six. Okay. <laughs> what is our, what are our Los Angeles, LA? 4.4. Los Angeles. This is 4,367,911. This one is 6,742, so 6.7 million. And then we had 7.7 7. million. No, 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 just seven. It just should be seven, yeah, 7.0. 7. 7.0 0. 0 million, then 11.5, 14.5, 16.4, okay? Are there any questions or anyone who needs help inputting their in information into the Desmos table? Do we all see where the numbers are coming from? Okay, so now you have your table. Now we're gonna go down to box two, and this is where we're gonna put in our regression model, okay? So our regression model is gonna be Y1, swiggle line, but I, don't, I forget what it's called, MX1, Notice how I have to put the X1 so it knows where my X values are coming from, plus B. Um, you press shift in the button next to one. Okay. Once I have that, I can't see my line. So I'm just gonna move, readjust my window a little bit, zoom out a little bit. So now I can see my line. Do you all see your line? All right, so line one is done. So for line one, I'm gonna write out its linear equation. So the linear equation for line one is, I'm around into the nearest hundreds. Is that okay? So we have 0.15x plus 12.89. So that's my linear equation. Do we see that? So my 
we wrote down our slope and we have our, we have our slope and our y-intercept. We have our M and our B. So my linear equation that I write down on, it says, what is your equation? So if I wanted to track the growth rate of New York, this is what I would use, right? If I want to make predictions on what will be happening in New York. Got it? Yes. Can I delete that one out? All right. Now we're going to find our linear regression model for our Y2 column. So because I need to find Y2, I'm going to type in Y2, squiggle, MX1 plus B. So by typing that in, it now tells me my approximate slope and my approximated B value. Do we see that? So I know the equation of the line or rough line that represents the data for Los Angeles is y equals 0.25x plus 3.08, well, 80, sorry. Yes, because it told me my... Because there isn't an x2. You only have one set oh, of X's. Right. Yeah. Of the X going to be uh, in X, not just books. Yes. Books are going to be in X, not just Yes. Mm -hmm. Your slope is its own variable, but you only have one set of X data, right? Mm -hmm. Those are your years. All right. So the question that we go back and we look and see what it's asking us. So it asks us um, to find, so we found our equation of the line. Check. Found both of them. Check. And then it says, uh, find the point of intersection, okay? When do the two points cross? So we're going to find our point of intersection, and then that's how we're going to answer the question. The question said, when will the population of these regions be equal, okay? And what will the population be? So that's our goal to figure out when will they be equal and what will it be? Does that make sense? So we're going to go back here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. But after I zoom out, I'm just going to scroll until I see where they intersect. So notice how I just scrolled until I found their intersection. I'm going to click and ta-da, it tells me their intersection. So I found the intersection. So here's my X. My X is 87 point, well, 87 and 845 thousandths. And my... Um, y is 25 and 761 thousandths. What does X and Y represent? X represents the years, but the year is what? Perfect. It's the years after 1950. That's what your X represents. Your, I'm sorry? What's not the same? Oh, no. Sorry, I had the other graph still on. So, yeah. Um, double check your values in your table. Um, do you only have these two models in? Yeah, so take out the y equals. Yeah, the y equals I just wrote so that you could see what they would be put together. Okay, so the X represents your years after 1950, and the Y represents the what? The population of both, right? So that equals your population of both cities. You should only have two and three, like you should only. Oh, I wrote those, but no. Yeah, so on the paper, you, you're writing it down, but yeah. So yours may be slightly off then. All right, so roughly, this is after 1950. So it wants to know when will this happen? So what is 86.84 years after 1950? So, in, so when will it happen? So in what year? Um, in the year what? And roughly in the year 2037, the population of LA and New York will be the same, which would be about 25.6 million people, right? 
Now, it's crazy to think that that really isn't that far away from here. Like, this is only 14 years from now. Yeah. But it's crazy. Like, oh, 2037, that sounds so far away. <laughs> it's only 14 years. Um, the intersection means that in the year of 2037, the population of both cities would be 25.6 million people. Does that make sense? Okay. How do you feel about using a regression to find a system? It's definitely something. Okay. All right. That is all for 4.1. The remainder of the period is for you to work on your exit ticket. Um, so you're working on your exit ticket. Let's look at that. Oh, I need to clear my annotation though. Clear. And close. So you're doing this. And then our exit ticket. So let's look at our exit ticket, which you should be able to complete and turn in by the end of the period if you're on task and doing what you're supposed to be doing. Now, if you're on your phone or if you're fiddling around, talking to your friends, not doing your work, then you will not finish it. Um, and again, falls on you, the choices you make. Okay, so um, on parts, on numbers one, th two, th two, and three, you are solving for Y and plotting, just like we did in our example two in our notes, part two of our notes, right? So one, two, and three are like part two of our notes where you're plotting the linear equations and finding their intersection or if there is an intersection. Got it? Okay. On four, five, and six, you're using the front part of our notes, so part one of our notes, and you're telling me whether it's independent, dependent, or consistent, okay? So remember for independent, that means that you have different slopes and possibly the same y-intercept, right? But the key thing is you have different slopes, right? If the slopes are different, then it's going to be independent, okay? Um, for dependent, dependent means after you get y by itself on both equations, they come out to be the exactly the same thing. You have the same slope and the same y-intercept. So therefore, it, they are dependent, okay? And lastly, inconsistent. Inconsistent means you have the same slopes, but different y-intercepts. And that's because they're parallel and they're never going to touch, right? Um, example, question seven on your exit ticket is a flashback to your um, handy dandy algebra one. So this is came straight from an algebra one um, assignment and it's asking you what is, um, you have a school, your school sells tickets for its winter concert. Student tickets are $5 and adult tickets are $10. If your school sells 85 tickets and makes $600, how many of each ticket did they sell? So for this problem, you're gonna need to set up two equations. You're gonna need to set up one equation that says 85 equals blah, blah, blah. And then you're gonna set up another equation that says 600, 600 equals blah, 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 okay? Once you have your two equations, you can sol solve for Y and you can use either a calculator or solve for solve by hand where they meet, okay? Um, I would strongly encourage at this point because we've only gone over graphic graphically to use a calculator to graph and to find your intersection, okay? So once you have your equations, use your graph to find your intersection. So because we're gonna be graphing, we can let student tickets be our X and adult tickets be our Y. Make sense? All right, um, you are free to fly, little birdies.